So what about the effect of a volume change? Well, this has um, the most effect when we're talking about reactions in the gas phase. We just finished talking about gases and all the properties and equations and stuff. If we change the volume of a gas, that affects the pressure, doesn't it? If we decrease the volume, if we squeeze the gas into a smaller container, the pressure increases because we've made those particles get closer together. Now they're hitting the sides of the container more often, and them hitting the container is what causes the pressure. So more collisions with the container, more pressure. If we increase the volume of the gas, then the pressure is decreased. So if we lower the number of moles of a gas, that affects the pressure as well, doesn't it? If we take some particles out, then the pressure goes down. Here's our, here's our friend, PV equals nRT, pivnert. So if, if the number of moles goes down, then the pressure goes down. If the volume goes up, the pressure goes down. So the system can relieve a change in pressure by changing the number of moles of gas. So let's look at that. So here we have an equation, a, a chemical reaction. We've got nitrogen gas reacting with hydrogen gas to form ammonia. And this is an equilibrium. One nitrogen, three hydrogens will make Two, two ammonia molecules. And so if we count up, on the left side, we have four moles of gas particles. And on the right side of the equation, we have two moles of gas particles. And remember that the weird thing about gases is it doesn't matter what the particles are. They act the same. Because there's so much empty space and they interact with each other so little, it doesn't matter what they are. It just matters how many of them there are. So if we take this container that is at equilibrium and we push the lid down and decrease the volume, this is just the gases in here. When we decrease the volume, what happens to the pressure? The pressure increases. And Le Chatelier's principle says that it's going to oppose that. So we increase the pressure on it, it's going to try to decrease the pressure. Well, in this equilibrium, when we go to the right side, we have fewer particles of gas. When we go to the left side, we have more particles of gas. So if the equilibrium goes to the right, it combines these particles into a smaller number of particles. Fewer particles does what to the pressure? Decreases the pressure. Fewer particles means fewer collisions, which means less pressure. So when we decrease the volume of this, that causes an increase in pressure, and that will cause this equilibrium to shift to the side that has fewer particles in the gas state. Does that make sense? I got a couple nods, so I don't hope all that good. What if we increase the volume? Same reaction. Now we're going to lift this piston up and increase the volume. That causes the pressure to decrease. And the system's like, hey, wait a minute. We, we don't want change, OK? It's like, I don't, I, personally, I don't like change, unless it's my idea, right? If it's my idea, then it's good. But if someone else is imposing change on me, I don't like it. And that's how these equilibriums are, equilibria. If you change them, they, they try to undo the change. So we increase the volume, that decreased the pressure, and the equilibrium is going to shift in a direction to increase the pressure. We decrease the pressure, it wants to go back. And so it's going to shift to this side because it's got more particles of gas. OK? That only works in the gas state. The liquids, liquids and aqueous solutions and solids doesn't do that. So in summary, 
if you decrease the volume, it causes the equilibrium reaction to shift in a direction that has fewer moles of gas particles. If you increase the volume, it, it shifts the reaction to the side that has more gas particles, more moles of gas particles. And how do you know which side has more? Well, let's go back so we can look at this. Well, this is N2, okay? One mole of N2 plus three moles of H2. One plus three is four. Four moles of gas particles. Over here, we have two moles of gas particles. You look at the balanced chemical equation, and you're looking at the ones that are in the gas state. All of these are in the gas state. What happens down here if the moles of gas particles on both sides are the same? Then changing the volume mm -hmm. is not going to affect the equilibrium at all. Because you can squish it, but it can't do anything to oppose that, and so it won't. So if you have equal numbers of gas particles on each side, increasing or decreasing the volume won't change anything. So let's look at this example. Here's a, a chemical equilibrium in the gas state. 2SO2 plus O2 is, is in equilibrium with 2SO3. And the question is, what's the effect of decreasing the volume of the reaction mixture? Well, let's look at this and see how many, how many moles of gas particles do we have on each side. Here we've got two plus 1 is 3. And on this side, we have 2. So on the reaction side, we have 3 moles of gas particles. They're two different kinds of gases, but that doesn't matter. On the right side, we only have 2 moles of gas particles. So if we decrease the volume, what does that do to the pressure? It increases the pressure, right? If it increases the pressure, this, the reaction is going to move to decrease the pressure, to do the opposite. So which side is going to give us less pressure? The right side with two moles of gas or the left side with three moles? The right side. Okay, so if, if the, let's see, if the volume goes down, then it's going to shift to the right. What if we increase the volume? We increase the volume that causes the pressure to go down, the reaction wants to increase the pressure. So it'll go the other way. In industry, because many, many chemical reactions are, are actually equilibrium, or they're, we say they're reversible, because they can go in either direction. And so in industry, when you're making a certain chemical, you want to push the reaction to one side or the other. You want to affect the equilibrium in your favor. And so understanding what causes a shift in the equilibrium can allow you to maximize your, your yield and maximize your profits.